A histogram in Lightroom Classic is more than just a histogram. Welcome to the Visual Center, I'm Trent. In this video, I'll be sharing with you how the histogram in Lightroom Classic does so much more than it usually does in other software. Let me show you. The histogram can be found in the top right corner of our screen in both the library and the develop module, as you see here. Now, a histogram is a graph which displays the overall luminance values of an image. The amount of each luminance value is represented by the height of the wave throughout the graph. As you see here, there are a lot of shadows in this image because the height of the graph is highest in the shadows area. So this makes it a great help when we're trying to figure out our exposure or our initial editing steps. Now it also displays each amount of tonal value for each color channel, red, green, and blue. Now this is why with a color image, you see these colored waves versus a black and white image where we just see a neutral or black and white wave. Now the color channels, R, G, and B, when they overlap, they will also produce cyan, magenta, and yellow. When all three color channels are overlapping, we'll see a gray wave here in the middle. Now in a minute, I'm gonna share with you how we can actually use the histogram in Lightroom Classic to actually edit an image. So be sure to stick around for that. Now the histogram acts a bit differently in each module. For this demonstration, I'll be working in the develop module. At the bottom of the histogram panel, we see the exposure data for the selected image. This image was taken with ISO 500. I was using an 18 millimeter lens, the aperture 4.5, and a shutter speed of 1 2 50th of a second. Now this information actually changes to a percentage scale of the RGB values of an image when I hover over that image. So if I hover over the image, you can see now I have RGB numbers with a percentage value for that specific area or those group of pixels I'm hovering over. So if I hover over the white part of the sky here, you see that my RGB values go into the high 90s. If I hover over a very dark part of the image, you can see the RGB values drop below 10%. So close to 100% for each value is going to be bright white areas, where close to 0% is going to be dark black areas. If all three numbers are equal or close to it, that means it's a neutral color. If I hover over some green areas, we should see that green is going to be the higher of the numbers. And there you can see 23% versus 19 and 12. Now in the top corner of the histogram, we see clipping indicators. You can either hover to activate or click to turn on permanently. Hopefully you notice that some red appeared in my sky. Now clipping occurs when either end of the wave here in the histogram touches or reaches the sides of the histogram or the walls. It represents that the image is basically over or underexposed, sometimes too much. Now the walls of the histogram represent loss or clipping of detail. So shadows are going to be blue. I'm just gonna bring down the exposure to show you what that looks like. If I bring down the exposure, you can start to see blue appears, especially here in the model. That means my image is too dark, that there's no detail in that shadow, it's just solid black. If I bring up the exposure, now you can see the sky has gone red. That means that area of the image is overexposed. If I were to print this image, that would be paper white. Again, the pixel contains too little information or too much information, and detail is lost. So that's what clipping represents, the detail is lost. And you can see here, my wave is touching that right side of the wall. If I bring it back down to clip the shadows, you can see, again, my wave is touching that left side wall, you can see I'm starting to clip information. Now, I do believe that clipping can be used creatively, but generally it's a good idea to avoid it. The Lightroom histogram in the develop module can be used to apply adjustments to an image. There are corresponding adjustment sliders for each section of the histogram. So here, you can see below where my exposure data usually is. If I hover over the histogram, it says blacks, shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites. Now you can see here in the basic adjustment panel, we see exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. So these sliders correspond to the sections of the histogram, these five sections. The great thing about this is I can actually grab a section and just move it left or right to make an adjustment. And you notice that the corresponding adjustment slider, exposure, is what's highlighted and that's what's moving. And the corresponding value below my histogram here in the bottom right corner is going to reveal how much of the adjustment is being applied. So currently I'm at exposure plus 1.6. Down here we can see exposure plus 1.6. The great thing about this is something like contrast in image can be refined using histogram over just this contrast slider. If I use this contrast adjustment slider back and forth to add contrast, you can see it just applies an overall expansion of that histogram left to right, adding contrast to an image. If I reset that, 
I can actually select what points I want to add contrast. Maybe just to the shadows here. Maybe bring up the highlights a little bit. So I can actually refine that adjustment. As opposed to applying it to the entire length of the histogram, I can selectively choose which sections of the histogram I want to move to add that contrast. Another really cool thing about the histogram is that if I activate my crop tool, the histogram actually updates in real time if I select a certain area of my image to crop. So if I select this bottom area, you can see my histogram will change. So it's showing me in real time what the histogram will look like based off of the area I have selected in my image before cropping. Now, when I started shooting digitally, I was initially taught that my histogram should look a certain way. I shouldn't be clipping or the wave should extend throughout the length of the histogram. Now, while I believe these are good general guides for using a histogram, I don't think they should be a hard, fast rule we should apply to every image. So take a look at your image. If you're liking the way it looks, then you can ignore the histogram at that point. It shouldn't look a specific way. The histogram can be used as a general guide for exposure and those initial edits. Now, let me show you an image where clipping would actually make sense. So for this image, I actually may want to clip my whites a bit to get rid of that seamless in the background. So I can bring up my exposure a bit to get the product where I want it. And then I can hover over here to my whites and slide them to the right. And you can see I might start clipping there in those highlights. Now if I turn off my clipping indicator, I actually like the way that looks. I can move it up even a little bit higher. And I think that's good for a product image on a white seamless like this. All right, so remember, a histogram is good for viewing and overall exposure of an image. There's a lot of information provided by the histogram panel in Lightroom Classic, including exposure, RGB value adjustment amounts, and of course, the overall luminance of an image. The histogram can be used to edit our images. Just click and drag. And it's also a great way to add initial adjustments to an image, especially contrast. Now, if you do have any questions regarding the histogram, please add them to the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.